Polychrome Bitcoin ETF provides investors with a regulated pathway into the cryptocurrency market. When you're ready to take your investments to the next level, you might want to consider Monocrow. Hello and welcome to The Global View, the show where we look at ways for investors to make money beyond the ASX listed universe. I'm your host, Juliette Sali. Well, global markets fell overnight as the tech sell-off spread and the dollar advance. The tech-heavy Nasdaq index was off by 7 tenths of 1% and the broader S&P 500 index fell by a similar amount. The Dow Jones index lost 1.3%. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index managed to close higher after tumbling on Wednesday with its biggest contributions from a handful of heavyweights including Nvidia and Broadcom, while the Russell 2000 fell for the second day in a row after an apparent rotation into small caps had sent the index soaring 11.5% in its most robust five-day gain since April. 2020. Netflix shares were down in after hours trade as the streaming giant warned of caution ahead. Netflix beat targets, adding more than 8 million subscribers in its second quarter as it benefited from titles such as Bridgerton, Baby Reindeer and The Roast of Tom Brady. But it warned third quarter subscriber gains would be lower than the comparable period in 2023 when the password sharing crackdown had just started. TSMC, the world's largest contract chip maker, raised its full year revenue forecast given surging demand for chips used in AI, but it rejected the idea of a joint venture factory in the US. The Taiwanese company is seeing second quarter revenue rise 33% year on year to $20.8 billion. Domino's Pizza tumbled after falling short of estimates for quarterly same-store sales and Warner Brothers Discovery rose following a report that the company had discussed a plan to split its digital streaming and studio businesses from its legacy TV networks. The European Central Bank kept interest rates unchanged as expected but said September's meeting was wide open as it downgraded its view of the Eurozone's economic prospects and predicted that inflation would keep on falling. Markets see cuts in September and December. The euro eased fractionally. The yen came off its highs after daily data showed little fresh evidence of intervention from authorities and the dollar index advanced after strong US manufacturing data and jobless data that did little to suggest a significant slowing in the labour market. Initial claims for US state unemployment benefits increased 20,000 to a seasonally adjusted 243,000 for the week ended July 13. A closely watched part of the Treasury yield curve steepened as the uptick in unemployment claims added to the view that the Fed's likely to begin cutting interest rates in September. Interest rate sensitive two-year yields rose 3.4 basis points to 4.46% and benchmark 10-year yields rose 4.4 basis points to 4.2%. Well, I talked to Peter Cardillo from Spartan Capital earlier today and began by asking him his assessment of market action. It's been long overdue, this pullback. And of course, over the past uh, several days, we saw an exit out of the uh, tech group and of course, uh, uh, the market boarding out, which is a good sign going forward. But the market needed to take, uh, let's say, uh, a breather. And so I think... uh, um, the exiting of the uh, out of the tech sector and, uh, was combined uh, with another factor yesterday, and that is a uh, the political situation here in the states. Um, it does now appear that um, there's a good possibility that Biden is likely to withdraw from the the race by this weekend, and so that sort of changes uh, what the market uh, was running up uh, over the past week or so after the attempt of, uh, after the uh, um, Trump- uh, Attempted uh, assassination, uh, uh, yeah. And indeed, there's a yeah. lot going on, Peter, and a lot moving all the time. Um, there was that big Trump trade or Trump bump, if you like, earlier in the week. What are you seeing in terms of the outlook, though, particularly as we focus on earnings season? Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I think in, in terms of, of the market going forward, uh, I think once we move out of this uh, 
a little bit of a pullback or I don't want to call it a correction. I just think it's just a, a, a pullback from a very overbought uh, market condition. Um, I think, you know, the um, market is probably going to continue to work its way higher despite this uh, uh, political uncertainties here in the States. Um, but, you know, if you so far, it's a little, little too early to come to a conclusion about Q2 earnings. But so far, uh, the amount of uh, uh, corporate results have been all very favorable and, of course, uh, guidance as well. So I think um, uh, with the prospects of interest rates cuts on their way um, and, and the fundamentals of the stock markets, uh, that the stock market that continues um, to, to improve, uh, I, I think we, we go higher. All right. And with some of that momentum, particularly as we start to forecast likely cuts from the Fed, big moves in the likes of gold. What are you seeing in the material space? Oh, yeah, uh, I, I remain bullish on gold. Yeah, it it uh, touched uh, our um, uh, near term uh, objective of a new 52 week high. And I think uh, the next stop is uh, around twenty five hundred. Uh, at that point, we'll probably look at some sort of consolidation phase and then uh, move higher based on um, geopolitical uh, concerns, based on falling interest rates and based on uh, um, the prospects of uh, the U.S. election. So I think uh, we could see gold uh, uh, work its way up to about 3000 by year end. Does the same apply for silver? Yes, uh, I'm, I was a little surprised that silver uh, really didn't um, follow its peer uh, as it had been. Um, we saw silver uh, spot lease go a little over 31. Um, I would have expected that with the strong surge we had in gold prices, that uh, by now we would be closer to 34 $35 an ounce. That didn't happen. But that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Um, I suspect one of the reasons for uh, silver not fully participating as uh, uh, as gold has been is uh, the fear over the China demand, that is the China economy. And so that may have been um, one of the factors that sort of uh, impacted uh, silver from uh, uh, fully participating as his, as its pair ran up. And Peter, what's the outlook for fixed income and I guess the dollar as well as we look ahead to these potential rate cuts? Yeah, um, the dollar has been weak. It's, you know, if you look at the dollar index, it's certainly uh, come off that 105, 105.50 level. It got onto the 104 level. Um, I, I kind of think that we'll, we'll probably see uh, the index uh, Hoover around the lower end of this trading range. And the reason for that is, uh, besides the prospects of rate cuts, is that the uh, Japanese won over the past uh, several days um, has gotten stronger against the, uh, the greenback. And that, of course, is based on two factors. One, from a constant reminder from the Bank of Japan that uh, uh, they are ready and willing uh, to uh, take the next step to uh, dampen any further speculative moves against uh, the Japanese yen, and also from a very over overbought uh, dollar versus uh, the Japanese yes yen based on uh, the Japanese uh, ec- fundamental. Okay, and then of course, just moving into that momentum as well with fixed income as we continue to see big moves happening um, in yields with Chief Powell opening the door here for these cuts. Yeah, not only is it Powell, but it's a, a, a core of, of, of Fed members now that are all singing to the same tune uh, that, inter- that interest rates cuts are getting closer. Um, some have been more uh, pronounced on it. Others have said, uh, it still might be too early, but we are moving closer. And that's the key. And of course, Powell has said that uh, over the last three or four uh, of his uh, uh, speeches. 
what do you think in terms of the overall global economy, Peter? I mean, we heard from the ECB overnight as well. Uh, they held, but of course there is speculation that they will cut again just as the Fed's ramping up to cut. Yeah, I think it was a prudent move on their side. You know, they basically uh, highlighted that inflation um, is still somewhat elevated. Um, and, and I don't think they wanted to uh, incur uh, a, a a blunder in the sense that uh, they cut once, uh, they got the ball rolling, so to speak, in terms of global rates coming down. Uh, but again, uh, prudence. And I think uh, they probably are waiting to see what the Fed does in in, uh, in September. And I I would I would kind of think that uh, uh, that they will probably uh, follow with another rate cut. Also, because if you look at some of the uh, macro news out of the EU, um, it's been somewhat uh, sketchy, and so. Um, I don't think they can afford uh, to hold out for a long period of time. Of course, the you know uh, sticky inflation um, is the theme, but at one point or another, uh, I'm sure they don't want to risk uh, um, negative mac ec negative economic growth uh, as long as inflation uh, doesn't poke its way higher. Mm. So. I think it was just a, a prudent move uh, by the by the ECB. And then I guess in terms of all of those macro pieces we've talked on, the US election, the uh, geopolitical forces as well, what's the outlook for oil, Peter? Yeah, you know, I, I, oil uh, basically uh, from a technical uh, viewpoint uh, held that $80 range. Um, you know, the uh, oil market has been uh, focusing mostly on uh, the poor China economic uh, uh, outlook, and uh, so that demand uh, is, that demand question is is a big problem for the oil market. But as I said, from a technical standpoint, the market managed to hold that eighty dollar level. And if you look at uh, the drop in um, in crude stock stockpile stockpiles over the past uh, three to four weeks, uh, they've been rather huge. And so um, I think that's uh, probably a good indication that uh, for the reminder, remainder of the summer, that we're probably looking at $85, $86 a barrel. All right, just before we go, checking in on where the local market is set to open. In two minutes time, it is expected to be a negative Friday spy futures down by more than 1%. That does it for this edition of The Global View. Stick around. The Open is coming up next.